everybody, this is Stephanie with Teaching in Room 6 and I am going to show you the motions that I go through with Calendar with my kids to kind of keep it more engaging and to get them to really internalize all of the information. So we always start off with, I ask the question, what is today? And then they respond with, today is March 16th, 2012, also written 3-16-12, it is the 117th day of school. And that sounds much better when the kids are actually reciting it, but you get the idea. And then we move into the school day fraction. I asked them, if I needed to write 117 out of 100 days, how would I write that as a fraction? They usually talk to their partner about it, and they have two things that they say. They say, the numerator is the number on the top with the part shaded in. It's how many pieces we've actually used. The put number on the bottom is the denominator. It's the total amount of pieces. And the kids actually do that. They put their numbers on top, part shaded in, they say the total amount of pieces. Um, next, we get into how many arrays. No motion for that. And then we go into prime and composite. When I say, is the number prime or composite? And when we're saying prime and composite, we say prime has two factors and two arrays. When we do composite, they show me it has more than two factors and more than two arrays. So whenever I ask them, even when we come into prime and factorization, and I say, oh, is the number two prime or composite, they show me it's prime or it's composite. Then we don't have any more motions from here, but we do do a lot of talking with each other. So I'll say, can you explain to your neighbor how you're gonna divide this, fra this number, or how are you going to multiply this number? So they're constantly talking back and forth to each other. Then we come into the second part of our calendar. And again, with the type of number, I say, can you please whisper to your neighbor what this number says? Can you please tell me what this number says? Can you say it in your head? So they're constantly saying the number out loud so that they get practice saying the number out loud, which is the point of this part. When we get into the rounding, I say, uh, what number are we going to round to? We're gonna to go to the thousands. We underline the thousands. Say everything in front and the kids repeat, stays the same. Then I say everything behind and the kids repeat, turns into a zero and we actually turn them into the zeros. And then we say the number that we're rounding looks to the number behind it. Is the six a go up number or is it a stay the same number? And the kids will say, oh, it's a go up number because it's higher than five. So it's a go up number so I can visually see that all of the kids know exactly what they need to do. And then when we get here, no motions for that, but we get down here into the median and the mode and the mean. And median, we put them in order from least to greatest, match them up, to find the number in the middle. So it helps them to learn that. For mode, mode is the number that happens the most. And the kids say that whole thing and they love it because we clap. The mean, we add then divide. The range is the distance between the smallest and the biggest. And the outlier is the number that's really far away. So those are the motions that we use for calendar. Again, going through all of this, even if we don't have a motion, we do a lot of talking back and forth. Um, oh, one more motion. I forgot to tell you, one more motion. When we do the equation of the day, and we're going to go graphing the coordinate points, we go across, then up or down. So the kids know we have to go across or back across, and then we go up or down. So we do the X and then the Y. And there you have it. There's calendar math very quickly in a nutshell. Thanks for joining me and happy teaching.